Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Richard Moglin. Welcome to this week's Stock Market Outlook video. And this week, I just want to start with a MarketSmith chart of the NASDAQ and point out the very high volume that we had on this past Wednesday. And this was the highest volume in quite a while. And then the next day, we had a kind of half-hearted bounce with a poor closing range. And then the next day, once again, very high volume, not higher than the previous day, so it's not a distribution day. Um, but this volume as well was higher than any in the past um, year or more. So uh, this is just kind of things that I kind of pick up that um, keep me kind of cautious in this market and uh, continue to, um, based on my system, lower my overall exposure. So that is the NASDAQ this past week, and we'll go through the day-by-day -day analysis in TC2000 in just a second. But I also want to show the S&P 500. And once again, we had two very high spikes in volume, um, greater than um, the majority of the previous days um, back within this uptrend and two distribution days as well. Um, and a close below the 50 day moving average. Um, so just kind of more caution signs popping up um, that tell me to not be too, too aggressive in this market. Uh, so that is MarketSmith. And now let's go through the day by day analysis on the QQQ and start by talking about these trend lines. Uh, so overall, this past week, we did have an emergence above this upper trend line, uh, similar to what we had back here at the start of the March uptrend, and also back here where we really got extended. Um, and you can see we had a pretty nasty day on this Wednesday, a gap down, and then it continued all the way to the 21 EMA. Then on this day, we had a gap up, try to move all the way back up to the trend line, and then had a very poor close. Um, really in the, in, the, in the bottom quarter of this bar. And on Friday, we had a slight gap down. And then once again, like this day, continued selling into the close and a definitive kind of break in trend uh, from this uptrend below the downward trend line and also the 21 EMA. And we're not yet below this 50 SMA, but once again, just kind of more signs that um, I shouldn't be overly aggressive. And uh, last week and over the previous two weeks, I've been slowly taking out um, some positions that are a little bit weaker. Um, and for instance, last week I sold uh, pins a little bit on this day and a little bit on this day as well. And also net uh, simply because I didn't have a cushion to hold. I started off the 50 SMA and um, I'll buy it back if it tightens up and, and sets up another buy point. But at this point, it's not worth the risk for me in my system uh, to own these type of stocks while I still have some Peloton uh, which I bought uh, back in on this day. So I have about a 20% cushion here um, and it's not selling off on high volume. So all these kind of different things uh, come together and um, basically determine if I still have a position or not at this point. And I'll actually go to my holdings here and I actually do not have CELH anymore. Um, let me delete that. Um, but right now I have a... Um, Three quarter position in Zoom. Um, it was selling off a little bit on this day, but had a nice reversal. And you can see there's no real volume in the selling compared to uh, this move up where I start my position. Um, SI um, is acting very strong. It did squat this past Friday, but overall it was still up almost 10%. Uh, nice volume coming in here. And uh, Teladoc, I sold a little bit. Um, and I definitely had an overweight position, so I brought it back to a normal size position um, this past week. And overall, once again, I have a nice cushion starting from back here. And next up, we've got Peloton, which I already talked about a little bit. But um, overall, it did sell off a little bit, but it was on lower volume. And then you've got three pretty tight closes above the 50 SMA. So um, if it breaks the 50 SMA, that would be a change in character, especially if it breaks this low. Um, but at this point, I'm happy to have a half position in this name. Next up, we've got Neo, And like Peloton, I have a half position in this name. You do have some downside reversal signs on this Monday and also on this Friday, uh, but no real volume or really selling pressure here. And right now it's staying above the 21 EMA. So as long as it stays above kind of these lows um, and maybe even fills this gap a little bit, um, I'm fine with owning a half position in this stock. Um, and hopefully I can add more through this point if the market um, starts its uptrend once again. So that is a quick overview of um, what I currently have and kind of my actions over the past uh, week or so. 
Um, and overall, my exposure right now is about 20%. And um, if the market resumes an uptrend next week and things start to work again, I'll increase that. Or if it continues to move down, um, there's more signs of distribution, especially in the names that I currently have. Um, I'll just uh, slowly ease out of the market once again. Moving on, let's talk about the Webby RSI of the NASDAQ Composite. And as I mentioned this past weekend, we were seeing some spikes that uh, were greater than normal, especially within this kind of phase of the uptrend. Um, at the very beginning, after a falter day, you do want to see nice spikes near 4% or even higher here, as we saw um, back at the start of the March 2020 rally. Uh, but as the kind of um, uptrend matures, you don't want to see spikes because that kind of means that the market is getting a bit extended um, ahead of itself, and you're likely to see kind of pullbacks after a big spike over the normal trend. Uh, so I drew this trend line in right here, and you can see we had some spikes on Thursday of um, two weeks ago, and then once again on this Tuesday, and then we saw the sell-off the last three days. So um, this is something that's very helpful, um, and I'll definitely be watching this in the future after um, 10, 12 weeks um, after the fall through day occurs. And also taking a look at the percentage above the 50 SMA, you can see that this past week, as I noted in my previous stock market outlook video, we were relatively close to that 7.5% mark, uh, which often marks kind of um, intermediate um, correction points where you can see we're right here, we correct a little bit, we move back up here, start this sell off, um, and uh, this kind of happens over and over again. So uh, this is something I like to pay attention to, and now we're back within kind of normal levels. And moving on to a weekly bar analysis on the QQQ, you can see we had a downside reversal bar on the highest volume in quite a while. Uh, once again, a reason to be cautious. And overall on the week, we are down 3.34% with a week closing range of only 10.3% and a daily closing range on Friday of only 22.6%. And the expectation from this bar is sideways or lower, although we are in a stage two uptrend at this point. Uh, moving on to the SPY, you can see we are down 3.35% with a weekly close range of 10.2%. And once again, a downside reversal bar on very high volume. And we actually broke the 10-week moving average, so we're no longer in a stage two uptrend at this point. Um, and the expectation from this bar is sideways or lower. Uh, moving on to the Russell 2000, the IWM. Uh, once again, downside reversal bar on high volume. And we are down 4.39% on this index with a week closing range of only 5.5% and a daily closing range on Friday of 11.7%. And the expectation from this bar is sideways or lower, and we are in a stage two uptrend at this point. Next up, we've got GBDC, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, and overall we were up 0.7% with a nice upside reversal bar off the 10 week moving average. And the expectation from this bar is sideways or higher, and we are in a stage two uptrend. Uh, next up, we've got the Ethereum Trust, and once again, we found support at the 10 week moving average, Nice upside reversal bar, and we are up 4.7% on uh, this trust here with a weekly closing range of 45.8%, and the expectation from this bar is sideways or higher, and we are in a stage two uptrend. Uh, next up, we've got the Dow Jones, and once again, this was weak as with the other major indexes, and overall, we are down 3.28% with a weekly closing range of only 9.7%, and a daily closing range on Friday of nine or 19.7%. And the expectation from this bar is sideways or lower, and we are not in a stage two uptrend at this point. Uh, moving on, we've got the FFTY, and once again, a huge downside reversal bar on high volume, uh, down 6.69% with a weekly closing range of only 7.3%, and a daily closing range on Friday of 24.8%. Uh, the expectation from this bar is sideways or lower, and we are in a stage two uptrend. Uh, moving on, we've got GLD, which continues to trend down um, and is below its 30 week moving average at this point. And once again, it was down 0.74% with a week closing range of only 27.1% and a daily closing range on Friday of 0%. And the expectation from this bar is sideways or lower, and we are not in a stage two uptrend. Uh, moving on, we've got the VIX, which had a huge spike this last week. Once again, a reason to be cautious. Um, and overall, it was up 51% with a week closing range of 71.1%. And lastly, we've got the XLF. Um, which continues to trend down, and overall it was down 4.58% with a weekly closing range of only 8.7%, and a daily closing range on Friday of 17.7%. We're no longer in a stage two uptrend, 
and the expectation for this bar is sideways or lower. Uh, so overall, a lot of warning signs here with these big downside reversal weeks on the SPY, um, IWM, and also on the QQQ. Uh, so moving on, I also want to talk about the potential true market leaders. And these were really showing signs of distribution before the indexes really broke down. So on Monday and Tuesday, uh, we saw some breaking some key levels and selling off. And you can see a lot of them now are below their 21 EMAs and a couple below their 50 SMAs, just more signs of um, kind of breaks in character and trend. Going through the charts, SI had a strong week breaking out of a potential high tight flag here and overall had a nice move up, a gradual pullback, and then a gap up on Friday um, along with a lot of Bitcoin related stocks and um, then did squat a little bit, but still it stayed um, above its open and was up about 10% on the day. So this looks strong, uh, three bar break on this Friday as well. Um, XV was also moving up strongly from uh, this short term breakout here, uh, but then did sell off on a decent volume on this day, but lower than average volume on Thursday and Friday. And overall, this definitely is holding up better than most of these leaders. Uh, moving on, we've got PLTR, which also had a VCP breakout um, this past week and had two inside days to end the week, which is suggestive that uh, people really aren't selling this at this point. Um, but overall, if it breaks these lows, that would be a change in character. Next up, we've got Teladoc, which also sold off, although not on huge volume and so far is finding support at its 10 day moving average. Upwork, you can see, is pulling back as well to end the week, but is staying relatively close to its 10 day and is still above the 21 EMA. And in my view, any stock that's still above the 21 EMA at this point is showing relative strength versus uh, most stocks out there. So keep that in mind. Um, Snap is also staying above that key moving average, although it had a very volatile day on Wednesday. It had a strong bounce back on higher volume on this Thursday, and then a nice kind of upside reversal bar on this Friday. So this definitely looks interesting, although this isn't a really tight base at all. Um, SQ um, broke down through the 50 SMA, but then had a strong recovery on Thursday and is still below those key moving averages, but looks decent on this Friday, although it was a downside reversal, but it was on lower volume than this update right here. Uh, moving on, we've got Fetch, which is finding support at its 50 SMA um, and no real huge down bars on volume here. We did have a gap down, but then a strong move up on Thursday and then a potential power of three setup on this Friday. So this actually looks pretty good going into next week and I'll probably have it on my focus list. Moving on to the crowd, this did sell off early in the week, but had a, a decent sized bounce to end the week on Thursday and Friday, although it was on lower volume than these down days. So I wanna see continue to move up on above average volume and I don't want to see it kind of reverse through the 50 SMA on above average volume. That would definitely be a red flag from me. Uh, TDD continues to live below its 50 SMA and really needs to build out a base here. Um, but at this point, it's finding support at about 740. On this day, it kind of undercut this low and then had a decent close at about 50%. Um, so I don't want to see it take out this low right here. But overall, I still definitely think this needs time and needs to build out um, a more mature base before um, a potential challenge of these all-time highs. Uh, moving on, we've got PGNY, which is above its 21 EMA and overall had a nice end to the week on Thursday and Friday, although it was on lower volume than these kind of distribution days right here. Um, MVCR found support at its 50 SMA so far, and um, this decrease is on below average volume compared to this volume back here during the uptrend. Um, Tesla broke its 21 EMA for the first time in quite a while since the breakout. Um, and it wasn't on above average volume, but it was on higher volume uh, than these three previous days. And overall did have a three bar break on this Thursday. Uh, TSM also pulled back to its 21 EMA. And you can see this is on above average volume here, uh, but so far it uh, doesn't look broken and um, definitely is one of the leaders in the chips space. Um, Corsair, you can see, had a very wild day on this Wednesday, moving all the way up here, uh, but then squatted, and it's now pulling back to its kind of 50 SMA, 21 EMA area. Um, but so far, hasn't really broken down. I don't want to see it take out these lows or even these lows, um, and I want to see it tighten up once again and form another potential pivot. Moving on, we've got Pinterest, and this probably stopped out a lot of people on this day, myself included, um, although I did sell kind of uh, proactively 
on this day right here after the very poor closing range on high volume. But so far it's bounced a little bit, but hasn't uh, retaken those key moving averages. Moving on to Etsy, it's staying above that key 21 EMA, which is good, but you do have a large downside reversal on above average volume, so keep that in mind. But at this point, it definitely looks pretty strong. Uh, PDD is staying near that 21 EMA and it hasn't really broke down just yet, but did have a failed breakout here on Monday and then it continued uh, move downwards on Tuesday and Wednesday and also a downside reversal on this Friday. Uh, Peloton, as we discussed earlier, um, is hanging in there. It did sell off a little bit, but on below average volume and now is tight the past three days above the 50 SMA. Uh, Zscaler also looks pretty strong. Um, it's trying to retake that 21 EMA, but it couldn't quite do that and hold it on Friday. Um, and overall, these two down days, this downside reversal and bullish or um, bearish outside day here, uh, were on high volume. And then you've got a slight gap up and then continue to move down through the 21 EMA. So I really want to see a move up on volume um, and a challenge of all-time highs at this point. Um, Roku has pulled back to the 21 EMA and no real signs of distribution. You do have one day on above average volume, uh, but it did have actually a decent close on that day. Um, SE, you can see, did sell off on above average volume, but it is holding that 21 EMA. Um, Net, I also um, sold the rest of my shares on this day after uh, selling a little bit on this day and this day, and overall needs to kind of form out to this base a little bit longer, although this is a potential kind of double bottom formation here, but definitely needs to tighten up on this right-hand side. Uh, Twilio also pulled back to the 50 SMA very sharply on above average volume, but is holding that key level and had a pretty decent bar on this Friday. Uh, Neo, we already discussed earlier. Um, Melly, you can see, um, pulled back to the 21 EMA and broke that level, but then rebounded on Thursday and then had a nice inside day on this Friday. Uh, Futu is holding up very, very well. You can see it's pretty much going flat after the strong move up. And overall, I want to see volume decrease and this tighten up on the right hand side. And then this would be a potential high tight flag. Uh, moving on to Zillow, I let go of the rest of my shares of this as well on this day and this day, but it is holding the 50 SMA. Um, and this day you can see was on very high volume, uh, but overall you've got these two bars within this range. So, so far, just consolidation near this key moving average. Uh, moving on to GRWG, you can see it pulled back this past week. Um, and really probably took out a lot of people on uh, this day and this day as it broke all of these lows. But so far, it's holding above that 50 SMA 10 week line and had a decent close on this Friday. Not the best, uh, but I do want to see um, maybe some inside days and then a start of a move up here. And then I would be interested in this stock. Um, EMPH also pulled back this past week on above average volume, uh, but then is holding above the 50 SMA. Uh, Fiverr, you can see, pulled back dramatically over the past two weeks and definitely looks like it needs a little bit more time as it pulled back to this kind of um, volume by price zone here. Um, a lot of shares are traded along these price levels um, and overall it is holding that key 200 level after it undercut it on this Wednesday. Next up, we've got Apps, which did pull back this past week on above average volume a few days, uh, but is holding near that 21 EMA. And lastly, we've got CELH, which after a very strong move up, um, did pull back and break trend a little bit, uh, breaking these lows on this Wednesday, and then continued um, move down on Thursday and Friday below the 21 EMA. So overall, um, I'm looking for this to form a base here, potentially against the 50 SMA, and then I'd definitely be interested in getting back into this name. Uh, so overall, looking at the leaders, uh, you have a lot of them kind of breaking key levels and below their key moving averages but there are definitely some in here that are holding up better than others. And moving on to my focus list from this past week, you can see we actually had three that were positive within this market weakness, uh, but the majority were down on the week. And going through these names, ZI was up 3% and is potentially forming another pivot point right up here. A nice kind of upside reversal action on this day and this day, and then an inside day on this Friday. So this looks pretty good, holding above those key moving averages uh, DKNG also uh, looks relatively strong, although you do have pretty wide action on Thursday and Friday. It is holding above that 21 EMA and 50 SMA. Um, HCO continues to move sideways within uh, this kind of shelf here and actually looks very, very strong relative to everything else, um, going pretty much sideways this past week. Uh, Datadog, we already talked about. Uh, Fetch, we already covered. 
Um, U is also holding above these key moving averages and had a very wide action on this Wednesday, but then these two bars were within this trading range right here and it is holding above the 50 SMA. Uh, crowd we already covered. Uh, Redfin broke that 21 EMA and potentially it's going to revisit these levels right here, which also line up with the 50 SMA. MVCR we already covered holding that 50 SMA. Uh, Corsair we already talked about. DocuSign really broke down this past week below these lows and is now below the 50 SMA and doesn't look too good. Um, Nets, you can see also pulled back below the 50 SMA. We already talked about it. And lastly, we've got FI, which can use to build out uh, this shelf, although it is below that key 21 EMA at this point. So overall, not the strongest performance from my focus list, especially given the market weakness. But you do have a couple that are definitely standing out and showing relative strength. Um, so moving on to sentiment, let's go to my Twitter surveys. And overall, we saw a definitive drop this week from 46.2% bullish, now only 39.3% bullish, which is a good sign. And if we go to the name exposure index, we have seen a drop from 112.93 to 83.51, which once again is good. There's fear coming back in the market. Uh, this is what we want from a correction. Moving on to the bulls versus bears poll, you can see we're still above 60 and I'm watching for a move down to around these levels at about 50 or 53, where we did kind of bottom uh, this most recent correction. And moving on to the put call ratio, once again, we're seeing fear come back into the market. Uh, we're not anywhere near 1.15, uh, but we are moving in the right direction. And finally, moving on to the IBD Big Picture article, the headline reads, stock market sell-off continues as NASDAQ gives up key support level. Reading through, they discuss how the major indexes lost some key support levels like the NASDAQ and its 21-day exponential moving average, Dow Jones and its 50-day moving average, um, and overall they talk about how uh, the NASDAQ only has one distribution day, but I think that's kind of why it's so important to watch the leaders because um, if you've been watching those key stocks, you know that there's been some distribution under the hood um, from those previous um, market leaders. Reading through to discuss how you should be focusing on relative strength and trying to find those next uh, potential true market leaders once the uptrend resumes. And you should be kind of playing defense, getting off margin, cutting those losers first. And here are a couple ideas to watch, GBDC, PayPal, all kind of Bitcoin related uh, stocks and equities. Uh, so overall, current outlook is uptrend under pressure and you have five distribution days on the S&P 500 and one on the NASDAQ. And moving on, we've got the Wishing Wealth blog. And the GMI signal is still green, but we do have a tick down to five out of six on the GMI. So overall, my current outlook is like IBD, an uptrend under pressure. And I think this next week is very, very critical. Do we see continued selling in the leaders and the indexes? Uh, does the NASDAQ break its key 50 day moving average? All of that would suggest that we need more time and might need a more extended correction. Um, however, do the leaders kind of rebound next week and retake those key moving averages? That's another thing that you have to be um, ready for um, and just kind of focus on your stocks, focus on the leaders and um, make sure that you're practicing progressive exposure and handling your risk um, as you should be. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did find it helpful, please go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys in future videos.